757, you're welcome along to OTBAM. Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Good morning, lads. How are you? Uh, not, sort of sweaty palms, a little bit nervous. Still reeling from last weekend and just this, it's been a whirlwind week, Quinny, and I'm not sure what to expect tomorrow. You uh, you were, he. I saw some... A whirlwind uh, what? Like, what just, are you, what just, are you I'm, sweaty I'm rattled, palms? I'm rattled, I'm rattled, I'm rattled like? after last week. Fans you're constantly winning, beating everyone all season and... Well... You know, one, one. How, 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 try if to they be a lose, Munster fan. Try to be a Munster tomorrow, fan. Well, or, it's a good time to be a Munster fan. If they lose tomorrow, it's a long time between drinks. Sure. You know, he he. There was some some video footage going around yesterday of himself and the team walking into the Black Rock pub. Raj. Black Rock mm. and uh, the whole is that team, what you call him? the team, the team in, in tow, and he looked like Lord of the Manor strutting around South Dublin. Um, you were you were onto him. I just briefly chatting to him during the week. Um, I would try and stay away, really, because um, it's a different week for everyone, really, isn't it? For Leinster and La Rochelle, and, and this is the pinnacle, really. This is the top table stuff, you know, and it's, it's you've got to keep your focus, and he'll know better than that, as will, you know, Leo, Leo as well, about keeping focus, blocking out the outside noise. A lot of focus on, will it, you know, Leinster losing to Munster last weekend, will it affect him? If it was the same team that's gone out tomorrow, it possibly could, but it's a different side for Leinster. It's, you know, 11, 12 internationals coming back into that side and well, the top he, quality players. Ronan O'Gara himself in the examiner this morning says that, uh, I'm going to butcher the phrase now, but that it was a slap or some sort of a um, punch for Leinster, the Leinster environment, the Leinster group, that that it is a factor going into the week. Mm-hmm. That like that, you know, that James Tracy was saying on the show during the week that they, when they win together, they win together. When they lose, no matter what the players are, that everybody has lost. That They'll be disappointed. There's yeah. no, no doubt about that. And I think um, the mood in the camp would have been uh, a little bit low um, initially, but... You've got to move your focus and change it pretty quickly. I think um, if they can, you know, obviously if 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 it was if Le- La Rochelle were to win tomorrow and it would end up being a trophyless season again for Leinster, yes, it would be incredibly disappointing because there's an expectation there. An expectation drives the narrative really of what you should and shouldn't do and what you should achieve because when you have the quality of Leinster, and it obviously would have a, you know, maybe a little kick on effect into in, into. Ireland as well going to a World Cup and their preparations. So from an Irish point of view, it would be very good for Leinster to win this game tomorrow um, and get a little bit of a feel-good factor heading into the summer and preparing. Um, but last week for me, you know, you, you, it, it's definitely disappointing. There's no doubt about it. And the fact that it, I'm not saying it wouldn't hurt. Of course it would hurt. That just shows the standard that what it means to win trophies and get trophies and stuff. They're hard to come by. Mm. No matter how good you are, you know, getting your hands on silverware, you've got to get a lot of stuff right, manage a whole season. It's the same in other sports as well. So it will have affected them. But, you know, the reality here is when you start looking around the dressing room on Monday morning and you see the big guns are, are all <laughs> sitting around or you're going... This is exciting. So you've got to turn it around and make it exciting. European rugby, for me, was always a week that was special. It just had that feel that this is, you know, this is really special. And a lot of players say that. And it's not disrespecting the league in any way. I think the URC has gone to a level now that's far more competitive, far more exciting, fulfilling throughout the whole season, which has been brilliant um, with the South Africans coming into it and the competition. But Europe just... There's a certain amount of adrenaline. And listen, Leinster have been so dominant throughout the whole competition. They've been the best team all year. And La Rochelle, you know, on the other hand, have been probably just slightly behind them. If you were to go, who's the better side and who's been more consistent? La Rochelle got kind of a bit of a rattle with, with, with Ulster in round three. Um, horrendous conditions given. But they were completely dominant throughout the pool stages. I was at the Gloucester game in the in the in the yeah. the round sixteen game. The Gloucester, yeah, Gloucester game. La Rochelle Gloucester in the round sixteen game. They win by three points, late score to win the game. Very very nervous. They were, they were expected to beat them by twenty points that day. Possibly, and you know, I turned up very much relaxed to that game, thinking you know this will be great to see the atmosphere in in the stadium in La Rochelle, the passion that they have for the game. Um, thinking that and maybe the team turned up with the same and that kind of feel was there they were lucky to get through that game Gloucester were brilliant but 
probably a little bit of a reignition for for them against Saracens in that semi final. They were just very very dominant uh, in the quarter final, and then they blew Exeter away in that semi final. So um, two great teams, so many strengths, so many players you could go through and talk about matchups, but. You know, I think it's it's the mental side of this is an important part of it as well. A, a belt was how he uh, how he described it mm-hmm. for Leicester. He did give the context, as you're saying, about obviously all the players coming back. What uh, body blow, I would say, not yeah. a significant blow, yeah, a yeah. kind of a well, still something that takes a little bit of the wind. A little bit winded, a little, little bit yeah. winded. Yeah. Um, what I was sort of interested in the the chat he had been flagging this up from weeks out about like last year's final is kind of irrelevant that you know there are different players, not too many actually on the Leinster side. Not a huge amount, maybe on the Larish side, but maybe in sort of key positions, and you know it's kind of irrelevant. But what's your expectation about? I heard James Tracy call, just saying that we expected a slugfest, like, and and even in terms of the playbook, it depends what last way year. the players what? view each other. In other words, you know, when you're in a in a group like that in a dressing room, you know, how confident are you of getting the best, better of the opposition, of or how wary are you of, of their quality? So, I think for La Rochelle, Obviously, coming to Dublin is more difficult and you're playing a top-quality side. For Leinster, do they look back at any parts of that final last year and think we could have managed it better? Yes, of course. That second period when they were eight points up, you think it's the game. Um, La Rochelle were hanging on at one stage and the game... I think Liebenberg got a massive turnover um, in the the the, Lens, the La Rochelle half of the field, they got a penalty. He won a brilliant turnover. Where Leinster looked like they were going to break through. They made line a, a line break in the middle of that second half. Um, the management where Leinster kind of managed that game, I think they look back in that. They'll have to be like it is ridiculous thing to say about Leinster, but they'll have to be more clinical now. Yeah, and I think look, La Rochelle are a very a, 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 Robust side. To be fair, they're a little bit old school, where they're 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 not afraid to man up, roll up the sleeves, yeah. and kind of go toe to toe with you. As regards, they're hardy, and their try line defence is off the charts good. It is, yeah, and and by and large, defensively, they're very very strong side, yeah. and and to break down. So certainly in the early parts of your attack, you've got to be pretty physical and clinical um, to get some inroads which we know Leinster are capable of doing. And if they get the pace and tempo and flow, and, you know, Leinster's accuracy this year has been sensational, you know, offset piece, scrums, lineouts, they, they can nearly cut you open after one or two phases. Mm-hmm. Um, so multi-phase, when you get into that kind of a scenario, then that's what Leinster will want, to get it into big phases where they can, you know, get mismatches and stuff like that. But like I said about the, you know, is there any kind of thing in the back of anyone's mind about about that final they've got to bin that I think they've got to back themselves and it's it's the way the coaches will present about showing this is look this is where we kind of slipped up last year I think La Rochelle will certainly look at the period the periods of dominance and take they were on the rack there for a bit of that second half last year and hanging on mm-hmm. Ronan O'Gara won't want them in that situation you want to try and keep control of the game um, and it isn't all about just power for, for, for La Rochelle. I think that's the rock that, you know, potentially anyone could 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 perish on if you focus on one thing, because they actually play play rugby as well. They're dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at the centres that could play, Dante and uh, Satini, if they play, your man Satini is a serious stepper. He's, that little offload you know, in the semi-final. The scrum stuff. half is incredibly yeah. dangerous with his breaks. Um, it's, Ald- it's a totally is a different wonderful narrative player. than lead into last year where we had it was like even though mm. La Rochelle had beaten them in the semi-finals a couple of years previous and they'd been in the final of the year before there was still a little bit before they got over the line that bit of an underdog thing now it's like two heavyweights <laughs> yeah, slugging it, is, it out yeah. isn't it yeah and, and I think the um, Hastoy is very important for them yeah. you know he's he's still relatively inexperienced very talented player as is Ross Bourne for Leinster um, but you know, when you start looking at the Leinster team and you think of that front row of, of Porter and Sheehan Furlong, that, that's world-class, like, there's no doubt about it. It's top quality international level. If you are Leinster and you get some early kickable penalties, are you are you going for posts? Are you trying for tries early on? James Tracy was making the point for, during the week. For me, yeah. I'm going for posts. Right. It's cup final stuff. Yeah. I think cup finals for me, and I've always had this when I played, 
you may only win this game by a point. Yeah. But a point is enough, Shane. And, you know, obviously if it's out near the touchline and the kick is difficult, mm. I think you're going to the corner. But if they're kickable and you think they're bankers of three points, and my attitude is there, kick the points, sprint back, receive the kickoff, and try and get into the opposition yeah. half of the field as quickly as you can. So have strategies of winning the kickoff and how do we end up in their half again so that the next time we have a line-out, um, it's our line-out in their half and we can actually start attacking again. Mm. And within a space of two or three or four minutes after kicking the points, we're back attacking again. That's where you put the pressure on the opposition. Easier said than done, but... Look, there is times where you go to the corner and... But I... I it's... Uh, you only know if... There is strong defence. And, and even in that game last week with Munster going to the corner a few times, you know, it's easy saying say in hindsight, and I, do, I say this in commentary, when you go to the corner any time, when Ireland play... When you score the try, it's the correct decision. It's if genius. you don't score the try, you're also watching the momentum of the game. Have you got? Is the arm wrestle going your favour a little bit? If you're is ahead, 15, yeah. And if you're if you're ahead, um, Adrian, and you you're kind of protecting a little bit of a lead, or say a ten minute block that you just want to take the sting and out of the opposition, and you're a couple of points ahead, you have a kickable penalty. But no, we'll kick to the corner. We'll try and win the line out. We'll spend five ten minutes down here. We mightn't get a a score. But we're now we're kind of wearing them down a little bit. There's times when that that that's a good decision, but um, it's hard to break La Rochelle down physically as regards from all against yeah. him. But equally you, so, what, what it's do do? hard to stop Leinster as well. Will you talk to us a bit about that? Because like, what do you do when that's that's one of their big weapons and that's coming at you? Like, sort of grand when it's in their own half, maybe give away a penalty, maybe you can sort of illegally disrupt it. But how how do you legally tackle that mall when it's coming at you? particularly inside your own 22? We've all got to be on it really quickly and move. Um, any sort of hesitancy for somebody at the front of the line or if it's thrown to the tail or urgency can make a real difference. So in simple terms, it's hard to describe it when you don't have kind of video analysis here. But if the ball is won beside me, you know, if I'm lifted beside that, that, that line-out receiver and he wins it, and he gets the ground and I'm still in the air, that means there's three people from my team who were involved in lifting me. Ineffective. How quickly yeah. can they let go of me and engage here to stop that drive forward? Does that mean so that... So a lot of the time with Malls, um, Adrian, it's about the urgency of how do we react really quickly and get three or four or five guys in there really quickly against their three or four or five guys. So it's sometimes it's about getting that... You always or, hear... Or you choose not to contest. At the choose not to contest but is you that, can, is that, you can is that still likely? but nowadays in the modern you? game you can contest and then react really quickly okay. and, and cause a bit of damage so a lot of teams are really good at splitting the lifter so if you're the receiving player and you've two lifters lifting a, a, a player and as you're bringing him down to ground the three of them become in that, your, on that, your own line yeah they become that front line yeah. if you can split them in any way it just it From breaks a defensive it. point of view. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm trying to go one on one here um, against my opposite guy and try and split him a little bit away from the ball or get in there somewhere or wrap the guy who's won the ball in the lineup. So look, there's lots of things you can do. But the biggest thing to make it simple for the listeners is is urgency and getting in a low position. So they can win the ball cleanly and get it back to the hooker at the back of the mall. But if you have five or six guys who are working in, in tandem, who are now driving trying to drive you the other way, you have a certain amount of time that the referee says, use it, use it, use it, if you're not going forward. If you get momentum going forward with them all, sometimes it's very hard to stop it. Yeah. So sometimes you've got to pull out players if that happens and kind of start bringing it to a numbers game. So splitting it as much as you can. But it's difficult. Urgency and er getting in early defending it helps a lot. One of the reasons I want to ask you about that, and I, I'm not watching <clears throat> Top 14 every week to know if this is a part of La Rochelle's personality generally. I watch some of the highlight clips before Aaron comes on, but I did watch Mall the, has always the been Exeter a big strength for the last number forward. of years. They didn't, I'm not going to say they didn't compete in any line-out, there might have been one, but at any area of the pitch, at any given time, they did not go up with Exeter's line-out. They stayed and waited to attack it when it hit the ground. And they're so powerful on the ground and they're so aggressive. Um, and obviously, if you can get someone like Will Skelt Skelton, he can nearly kind of twist and turn mm. a mall on his own and he gets in there it's hard to stop him so um, 
they, they have a lot of power. Leinster, do you think is that a? I don't think they'll be throwing players in the air. They will contest in some for sure, but you think the the, the reason for contesting is really believing that you can. Yeah. You you there's a real good chance, and if you have someone like Paul O'Connell who's moving up and down and he's so shrewd and you're not really sure as an opposition, is he going to go up in front of you, or behind you? Is he going to move? That kind of puts doubt in the line-out callers. Whereas if you're staying down, you know that what's coming. So Leinster, I don't. I Leinster will. What they've done this a uh, lot is is taking the ball off the top and little plays around the back of the line out, the front of the line out, Dan Sheehan powering around, hitting someone in midfield. So there's a lot of strategies there, but there may be a couple of times where they just go man up and roll the sleeves up and Leinster win the line out and they try and maul it because they have a very, very good maul as well. And if Leinster gets set very early, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the ball is, is, is long, the maul is long. Well it's a great chance that Leinster will score from a mall, but it's difficult when you're against a very big side like that who are good at defending it. But Leinster's mall defence has been very good as well this year. We uh, we often talk about home advantage, Quinny, like it, in almost cliched terms, like a, oh, it's a two-point advantage or whatever else. James Tracy was very interesting during the week talking about how it genuinely can make a difference. If you're the away team, there's almost like a cloud that comes over you when you feel like the, the atmosphere is building up against you. I saw Leinster were uh, calling on fans to, to get into the stadium early tomorrow as well this week um, how big an advantage could that possibly be? It's big if you if you need um, lift and support particularly I always think for myself it's it's when you're hanging on when mm-hmm. you're on when you're defending for a long period and somebody comes up with a big tackle or a big turnover it's incredible you really feel that energy and it kind of can give you a lift it can give you an adrenaline rush but um, plus you're in familiar territory you yeah. know and um a little bit of negativity or doubt seeps into the opposition that this is going to be the inevitable scenario because the crowd are all over you and all that stuff. And, you know, it's hard. And mm. it's it's the intrigue of sports psychology, isn't it? Right yeah. across the board, Shane, because, you know, it happens in sport all the time. Anecdotally, this week, the Munster fans that you've spoken to, are they are they behind Rog and La Rochelle? Or are they There's supporting their Leinster? There's a mix. Um, and I think Leinster winning this game is brilliant for Irish rugby in a sense that we have a World Cup coming up. Um, We want that momentum going forward into summer camps. And I think, look, it's... Without being naive here, look, Leinster are Munster's biggest rivals. It's probably not the same as it was the last number of years because Leinster have been ultra-dominant. Um, and I think I meet a lot of Leinster people who say that I was there in 06 and 08 cheering you guys on and for Munster and I wish the Munster fans would do the same. There's plenty of Munster fans who will, will cheer Leinster on and want Leinster to win. There's plenty of Munster fans who will want La Rochelle to win and I'm fine with either. I think it's good for Lens, for Irish rugby if Leinster win. I got tweeted by a guy called John O'Donnell. I'm sure he's a very nice fella. He's a Leinster fan and he was saying, why don't I... If I say Munster winning a trophy last weekend, if they win the URC, is great for Irish rugby. Why won't I say this? Fair point, John. It is. And Leinster winning this week is really good for Irish rugby. And I think, unless you have some sort of an allegiance to Raj, um, yeah, you like should look. You should look. Unless you were one of his best yeah, mates. I'm like, keep, uh, keeping myself pa- Pascal, out of this. Pascal Jacob asks the most pertinent question of the morning on YouTube as we wrap here. Who's Quinny supporting? I'm 50-50 on this one. And that's being honest. And I really will walk out of the stadium tomorrow. I'll be, I'm very close to Ronan. I'm godfather to one of his children, Max. Um, I played with him for so long. And from a personal point of view, yes, I'd love him to have that joy. He, ha- he had it last year, though, and I'm kind of saying to him, yeah, you'll be grand. Enough is enough. You had it last year, the big celebration. Um, Leinster, on the other hand, it's brilliant for Irish rugby if they win because I, I want Ireland to do incredibly well. And I do want Leinster to do well tomorrow, so I'm yeah. kind of split. Mm. But I think if you're if you're not, I think Munster. If you, if people who have not are not an allegiance to rugby clubs and are passionate and haven't experienced any sort of a kind of slagging or abuse over the years, they should support Leinster. Yes, they should, and we should support the Irish teams. But um, so yeah, go out and support Leinster tomorrow if you uh, if you uh, if <laughs> you're not close not to Ron uh, O'Gar, the Cork people will kill me. Um, has his tongue in cheek. But look, I you know, it's it's going to be <laughs> an do. incredible game. It's going oh. to be a game that um, 
it's hard to call Leinster in the driving seat here and I think Leinster will win the game and it will be good for Irish rugby when they do so Wow score prediction Quinny uh, it's hard um, it's going to be tight I'd say and it's going to be serious a serious um, challenge for Leinster because they're going to be physically text, test, tested it was last year 24-21 24-21 Seven or eight points to Leinster. Right. Ronan won't mind me saying that. He'll be probably happy that I'm talking up Leinster. But look, <laughs> it's not patronising. Just look at the, what what they did throughout the whole pool stages and the knockout stages. They've been at a different level. That's not to say that La Rochelle can't win this game. They're a very, very capable side here. Um, so who knows? All right. Well, uh, you're on commentary duty for us. Yes. This game, so you'll be impartial anyway, no matter what happens. Mm. James Tracy, I just have to keep him in check, you know, to make sure <laughs> that, he's that is in itself worth tuning. To in. make sure he's not going wee wee wee. I'll have to say, James, now that you're in the big bad world of, of the media stuff, you have to say they. Leinster or yeah. they or yeah. you know. Right. Thanks a million. Enjoy Cheers the games. Thanks a lot, Alan Quinlan there, as always.